Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll be discussing about scattering parameters with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me show you how many points that I'm going to cover in this video. See, first of all, I'll be discussing about basics of scattering parameters. After that, I'll be discussing about why to use scattering parameters at microwave frequencies. And at last, I'll be discussing about how to measure scattering parameters. So let us begin this session with first agenda that is basics of scattering parameters. First of all, I'll explain the meaning of scattering parameters. To understand that, let me take one example. If you observe here, we have magic T. With magic T, we have in total four ports. Let us consider this is port number one. This is port number two. This is port number three. And this is port number four. Let us assume we give input over here. So whatever signal that we insert over here, that is getting scattered in different ports over here. So using scattering parameters, we try to identify how much portion of wave is getting scattered in these different ports. Even in scattering parameters, we try to identify how much portion of wave that is getting reflected back over here. So scattering parameters are used to identify reflection coefficient and transmission coefficient in which we try to identify how much portion of waves are getting scattered in different ports. If you observe scattering parameters, then that we use it to analyze devices which are operated at microwave frequencies. Microwave frequencies means frequency is there in range of 1 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. Here we have different categories of devices like microwave devices are there. In microwave devices, we can have isolator, directional coupler, circulator and even many other devices are there like magic T, E plane T, H plane T. Right. In this video lecture series, I will be discussing about many devices using scattering parameters. At microwave frequencies, we have RF circuits that can be analyzed using scattering parameters. In RF circuits, we may have amplifier, filter, mixture, oscillator and switches. We also analyze antennas using scattering parameters. See, in antennas, we try to identify bandwidth of antennas. And bandwidth of antennas can be identified using return loss characteristics. Return loss characteristics is based on reflection coefficient of given antenna. So antennas can be identified using scattering parameters where we can have different categories of antennas like microstrip antenna, dipole antenna, horn antenna, reflector antenna. There are many categories of antennas, right? Even waveguides are analyzed using scattering parameters. In waveguides, we can have circular waveguide and rectangular waveguide. In this video lecture series, I'll be discussing about circular and rectangular waveguides in great details in future coming videos. These scattering parameters are also used to analyze transmission lines. In this video lecture series of microwave engineering, I have covered three categories of transmission lines. See, here I have shown figure of two categories. One is two parallel wire transmission line. Second is coaxial cable transmission line. And third category is microstrip transmission line. So transmission line analysis that can be done using scattering parameters. So one thing that should be clear to you, see scattering parameters that we use it at microwave frequencies, right? And at microwave frequencies, other parameters are not applicable. Like if you talk about electrical network, then electrical network that can be analyzed using H parameter, Y parameter, Z parameter or ABCD parameters. But at microwave frequencies, these parameters are not applicable. These parameters are applicable at lower frequencies only. So what is the reason behind it? If you talk about these parameters, H, Y, Z or ABCD. Then with these parameters, what we do is we provide open circuit and short circuit. After providing open circuit 
and short circuit we try to measure voltage and current and by having open circuit and short circuit whatever voltage and current that we measure based on that we identify these parameters right but at microwave frequencies it is next to impossible to have open circuit and short circuit first of all one should know what is open circuit the open circuit means infinite impedance short circuit means zero impedance at microwave frequencies one cannot have infinite and zero impedance so that is the reason behind usage of scattering parameters at microwave frequencies not only this there are many other reasons like if you talk about devices which measures voltage and current then at microwave frequencies it is next to impossible to have a measurement of instantaneous voltage and current so we don't have devices available which measures instantaneous voltage and current right even if you talk about active devices at microwave frequencies then there is a stability issues see those devices are operated at certain frequencies only if you change the frequency then there will be stability issue with devices that's why we cannot have measurement of microwave frequencies with this parameters for that we need to have scattering parameters in scattering parameters what we do is we analyze how much portion of waves that is getting scattered in different ports right so microwave devices that is having frequency dependency and with frequency dependency one cannot apply this normal parameters like h y z and abcd parameters these are suitable for lower frequencies only right now question is how to have a measurement of scattering parameters so for that there are few essential notations that you need to remember first let us consider we are talking about s i j see here with scattering parameters we are talking about s i j where this i that explains you output port and this j that explains you input port if you talk about measurement of sij then here it is a ratio of output by input where this i that stands for output and this j that stands for input so here sij that is a ratio of normalized output wave at ith port divided by normalized input wave at j port to be more precise if i say output is having notation b and input is having notation a then sij that is bi by aj where bi is output wave and aj is input wave here we are talking about normalized wave so if you talk about bi then that is output voltage at i port divided by square root of z not i see here in scattering parameters we always talk about normalized wave and to get normalized wave you will have to take a reference of characteristic impedance so here bi that is output voltage at i port divided by square root of characteristic impedance at i port similarly aj that is there with respect to input wave so input voltage at j port divided by square root of z not j where z not j is characteristic impedance at j port now let me take one example that will gives you more clarity like here we have two port network where we have port number 1 over here and port number 2 over here if you talk about s11 then here we have output and input that is there at port 1 what it means we measure input at port 1 and reflection at port 1 so that is reflection coefficient at port 1 right if you talk about s22 then here input and output that is there at port 2 so here we measure output which is reflection at port 2 divided by input at port 2 that is reflection coefficient at port 2 if you talk about s12 then here the first one that belongs to output and second two that belongs to input so here we give input at port 2 and we measure scattering at port 1 means that is a transmission coefficient from port 2 to port 1 right 
if you talk about s21 then here the first two that belongs to output and second one that belongs to input so here we give input at port 1 and we measure scattering at port 2 that is transmission coefficient from port 1 to port 2 right that is how we do measurement so scattering parameter explains how much scattering of wave that happens and always remember here we do measurement with normalized wave and that normalized wave that is there with respect to characteristic impedance so whatever normalized wave that is there that will be as per output voltage or input voltage with respect to characteristic impedance so voltage divided by square root of z naught that will be always there i hope you have understood this till if anything that i would like to share just note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video